I often feel like I'm in an echo chamber here, particularly on this issue. In 2019, in the All-Party Group on Climate Action, we got a motion passed that the government would conduct a review of energy poverty throughout the whole population, because the Vincent de Paul um, research that is alluded to in this motion shows it is much greater and much deeper than what is accepted by the Department of Social Welfare or the Government. And only last month, People Before Profit put a similar motion on the em energy crisis with a lot different emphasis on the cause of that crisis and uh, remedies to adjust that cause, to, to uh, address that cause. So we do support the, uh, the call on the government to take action to deal with the impact of the energy crisis the low level of SEAI grants that are available to the poorest of people, the numbers of uh, households that don't qualify based on income tests or on uh, health tests for those grants, and the exclusion of many from the uh, fuel allowance. And we support all the calls in this to extend that. However, uniquely, here the rural group have managed to identify the completely wrong cause of the crisis and suggest a remedy for the underlying issues, which shows utter contempt for the climate crisis and for the many millions of people, both in urban and rural settings, that they have about this crisis. The energy crisis and the hikes have nothing, absolutely zilch, to do with the ban on fossil fuel exploration and gas exploration. And it wouldn't matter if every, if every team of Shell and BP were combing the Irish oceans looking for that gas and oil, nor would it matter if they brought that gas and oil on shore and any effect it would have on the stability of prices or fuels to the Irish household. Why? Because it would be privately owned and sold and it would be on the open market like all other fuels. And past governments ensured that we, the people of Ireland, would never benefit from any exploration of gas or oil. And at this stage, to say that it is wrong to ban the exploration of gas or oil is utter climate denial. And I'd also like to ask the rural group if they're actually saying, when they talk about homemade gas, do they support using fracked gas? Do they support fracking gas on shore? Do they support the idea that we would return to fracking gas on land? Because their constituents might like to know if that's what they're saying. We deregulated the energy market here, a neoliberal policy supported by many of the deputies who are pushing this motion today. And the inevitable outcome of that was that the government would not intervene in the energy market. And now we go from having one of the cheapest prices of electricity to the consumer in Europe to now having one of the most expensive. And that was because of deregulation and neoliberal competition. But the most immediate threat to our lights going on or off this winter is not the lack of oil and gas exploration. Regardless of what the deputies claim, it's the unbridled proliferation of data centres and a policy that here again, some of these people put in this motion would be cheerleaders of because it appeases the multinationals and whatever wish list they have or whatever demands they want to make on the state, even if that means power cuts to ordinary people. We support the reversal of the carbon tax on ordinary people, but we want to see hefty profits or hefty taxes on the profits of those who pollute the planet. So I'm afraid we couldn't support this motion for those very reasons that it cuts to the heart of wh where the crisis lies at the market for d denying people the right to access fuel when they need it, pushing up the prices to ordinary people, and at the heart of the climate crisis. Um, the, there are good stuff in the motion, but there's really reactionary stuff as well. So we will not be supporting this motion.